Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another Swiss Lathe video. Uh, in this video, I'm going to finish setting up some of the tools that I'm doing. And uh, basically, I'm working on making my second part on the Swiss, which will be the spacer for our knives. That is the part that goes right back in here. My personal one has multicolored variations, because why not? Yeah, so I've got a piece of brass in there right now. I'm touching off all the tools. There's no touch probes or anything on this lathe, so you kind of have to manually do it with a shim, move it in till the shim doesn't move, and then you know your tool is that far away from the, the material. So that works well. Um, for the Z, you basically have a reference tool, like the first one, which will be the part off tool, and then every tool is referenced off of that Z or Z plane. Uh, so you kind of have to be pretty logical with how you do all of this focus. And uh, yeah, let's check it out. So we'll take a little peek inside here. Um, I basically now always have a paper towel in my hand because it's so oily in here. The, the coolant is an oil-based coolant, um, fairly clear and viscous, kind of like cooking oil. But it's, I haven't run coolant in a day or two and it's still dripping from basically everywhere. But that's okay, it's part of the process. So I've got a piece of brass in there, 3 8 inch rod. It is connected to the bar feeder, which is over there. I got a six foot LNS bar feeder. Let's take a look down here. So on the main side, I have four tools set up. I have my VCMT turning tool. I have a grooving tool, 78 thou grooving tool. I have a 78 thou parting tool with a left hand holder, and then a 78 thou parting tool with a right hand holder. That uh, just kind of, I think it'll be a good idea to have both set up so that uh, depending on the length of the part and how I want to part it off and etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, but for the most part right now I'm using the bottom one now these all have coolant going through the tool Let's see if I can get in close notice that block on top of the holder there's a tiny little hole inside of it that'll shoot coolant at 2000 psi up to 2000 I was seeing about 1800 coming out one of the nozzles so almost all of the tools are going to have through coolant and then this one I've got a teed so I've got a through coolant drill bit as well teed to the parting tool for now I've got two ports on that side and then two ports over here that I'm then going to I've got some manifold blocks so I'm going to tee them off and get them dialed um, the final goal is to have five turning tools on this side and probably just the two on that side, the two parting tools. And then a whole bunch of drill holders here that are all getting coolant as well. So I have a spot and a through coolant OSG drill. On the sub side, I have a Kyocera boring bar that I had to turn down the shank to fit inside that collet with a little CCMT insert. I've got my Micro 100 internal threading tool which I also had to turn down this holder to fit it inside of an ER-16. I, I was under the impression, like I thought that these were ER-20. So I planned my tooling, I bought 3 8 shank, 3 8 shank. I'm like, yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, doesn't work. Or half inch shank, they're 12 mil shank. That's what they were. Um, doesn't fit inside an ER-16. So that's okay. Put them in the Nakamura, turned them down. They work fine now. And then I got a spot drill over here. Eventually the plan is to have Live tool, live tool, live tool, and then my 60,000 RPM spindle speeder, which is here. 60,000 RPMs. I'm pretty sure it's an electric spindle, hence the electric wire, with air bearings, hence the air bearing. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of power, but that's okay. It runs an ER8 collet. And in that guy, we're basically going to be running 20 thou end mills. Pretty teeny tiny. Yoink. Here's a bit of a better video shot of one of the through coolant holders. It's a Utilis brand. I got it from Gen Swiss. I bought all kinds of stuff from them. Parting insert, or uh, turning insert, turning insert, 
parting inserts, all kind of stuff. This is what a Swiss lathe collet looks like. This machine has three collets, so it uses two of these, one for the main and one for the sub, and then a guide bushing as well, which looks kind of the same, like similar. It's a mess on the table while we're still kind of getting set up and organized. Um, but one thing I wanted to show you guys was, so especially with these tiny tools, it's very important that when the spindle is at, okay, so if the spindle comes to zero on this tool, you want to know that it's actually zero, not out by five thou or up by five thou. Um, it's actually zero. So apparently they're really close from the factory, but I don't trust really close. I want to see it. I want to know it. So I'm trying to get this Mitutoyo 10th indicator here. But if we move the Z, I'm in Canada, so I'm going to say Z. Don't judge me. All right, so I'm moving it to there. Um, let's see, let's see. So that's not the right tool. Let's see if I can do this. Um, MBI program. T, uh, no, it's tool 520 insert. So I'm going to run tool 520. Uh, I got to close the door. I'm going to put this down so I don't drop it. Close the door to run the program. Close door. There we go. Now it's closed. Blinking means closed. Uh, okay, try it again. T520, end of block, insert. T520. Should be able to go cycle start. Cycle start worked, so code's no longer there. Position. There we go. So this is that tool. I'm about a quarter inch out, which probably looks about right. Let's move it in closer in the Z. Okay, there we go. That's where I want it. Now I'm going to move this head all the way back, and then I'm going to open the door. This is so hard to do with one hand. I'll get Erin down here eventually, and then she can film me doing this. So this is the adapter that came with my tense indicator. Uh, it doesn't actually fit in the collet that I have, because I have a quarter inch collet right now. But this guy ain't going to fit. It is too long. I can mount the thingy here, so I can go like this, but then it still doesn't really work. Um, it gets annoying. So, I just bought this thing. This is a Michitoyo, Michitoyo um, universal indicator holder thing. It's got a little spring-loaded plunger in the end that as you tighten it, that plunger comes out. Working upside down. Okay. So I think the plan is I'm going to go like this. And then mount it right there. And then bend the arm out. And hang this guy off of here. And basically have it like that. So that now the shank and the tip are pretty coplanar and it's tight so I don't drop it, and then now my distance is only here to here, which is uh, plenty tight enough. Let's try this now. There we go. Obviously I have to tighten the collet, I'm just not going to do that for the moment. Look at that, that'll work great. So I can either measure it off of the roundness of that shank, or most likely what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the tool and measure the ID of that, that uh, bore, and then get it dialed in. My savior is here. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> There's this cool trick to work on the machine with the door open. Normally you can hardly do anything, but there's this like hidden little button on the side. You gotta hold that and hold this button for three seconds, two, three, and then it flashes. And then I can now close the collet and do stuff in the machine, but obviously my hands are stuck here, so it's a safety measure. Uh, it's called like two-handed operation mode, so that's cool. Um, I'm going to pull that, that tool out. These Micro 100 holders are wicked because they're super duper repeatable. The tool has a flat, like an angle on the back, so when it goes in the bore, it, it uh, aligns on there. Then there's another angle on here that helps tighten it down. 
there's cooling through gashes on the side. Let's cool and get right to the tool. Um, and they're super well made, they're repeatable. Harvey Tool actually just bought this company. So now I can get the tip inside that hole and we'll sweep it in. So I'm checking for alignment basically. I want the tool and the spindle to be perfectly lined up, not out in Y, not out in X, and I just want it to be perfect. So this will allow me to check that. As I rotate the subspindle, it should, so I should have a couple thou preload right now. So already I can tell that I'm out a little bit and I'm only barely rotating it. So then I move the two in position and so that while it rotates, that dial basically shouldn't move. And then you got to kind of wrap your head around and figure out which way to move. Up, down, forward, back. Um, confirming that my position in the machine is accurate, which it's not right now. I'm going to call the tool offset, tool 520 again. Two-handed mode. Run the cycle. Okay, I'm good. So according to the previous offsets, I'm out by 45 thou. So I'm going to get the tool out of there. And then I'm going to move the axis to what it thinks is home. Okay, the other bonkers thing about this machine, there are five digits behind the zero. My other machines have four digits. This has five. So it's like, you know, the third digit is thousandths of an inch. The four digit is ten thousandths of an inch. The fifth digit, I don't know what you call it, like hundred thousandths of an inch. Uh, microns basically so or millions they call it millions of an inch like 10 millionths is one on that last digit so I can actually move the machine in 10 millionth increments which is insane I've never seen that before okay so let's move the Y down or up okay so according to the machine it now thinks that it's perfectly centered let's see how close it actually is I can tell it's way off just by looking at it, I think. Maybe that's just the indicator. Yeah, interesting. Okay, so we have some preload. So like I was saying earlier, I turned down the diameter of this Micro 100 tool. Who knows if I turned it perfectly on center. So this offness could definitely be my fault, but it has to be fixed for show. Sure. I'm gonna fiddle with this for a minute. while the time lapse is filming right there. Um, okay, I got that tool dialed in very perfectly to within about one tenth of, of run out, which is epic. Um, see if I can see the screen here. I don't think it'll be reversed. But anyway, Y is seven tenths out. X is 29th out because, um, because the threading tool is, I guess, actually off center. The tip is not bang on center, so that's fine. I'm still gonna set it to, you know, I guess it's Y that I'm concerned about right now, which is 7 tenths, that's fine. So it's actually really close, but it's good for me to go through this process. I learn how to do it. Uh, I understand the machine a lot better, and I just start getting good at how to do all this, because I'm gonna have to be doing this a lot, I think. Maybe not, but it's good. It's good to trust what you're doing because I've already run into some issues where I thought it was good and it was not good. So that tool's good. So right after I filmed that last bit with the indicating the tool in, I was trying to get this part set up. I think it was last Friday and I was, I was pretty frustrated. And I was trying to like avoid everybody else so that I could focus on this. Um, and it was actually Aaron that came by and bugged me, which was good and suggested, or she asked, like I was stuck in the program, it wasn't doing what I want, and Aaron said, is there anything you hacked to make it work? And I said, no, it's all perfect. And then she walked away and then I thought about the word hack and I was like, well, if I hack it, the tool width this way, 
then I got it fixed. And then it totally worked after that. And I don't know why it works, but it totally works. So thank you, Aaron, for helping me hack that. Um, yeah, setting tool offsets, it mostly makes sense now, now that I've gone through it, but uh, except for that one tool has to be the tool with offset, um, but now it works, so whatever. Anyway, I was able to make spacers. Um, so these little guys have a threaded 440 hole in the middle and they're beautiful on the outside and the cycle time was 51 seconds. They were over two minutes on the Nakamura, so they're more than twice as fast. And uh, we've run a couple hundred so far and unfortunately now we gotta switch to a different job um, because we're just out of time. We need that part as well. So we'll come back to this one uh, soon. But the beauty of this machine and the way that I set it up and the way that I will continue to set it up is that it should have almost all of our tools set up all the time, always. So there'll be very little changeover, some collets and maybe a drill or something to go from job to job. So it should be pretty quick to jump between jobs, which is sweet. So my job today is to set up the, um, the screws on our knives because we are out and I need more by tonight basically. So I've got four and a half hours to finish programming that, get the collets all set up, add two more tools to the lathe and uh, finish programming and then try it and hopefully make a handful of parts by tonight. So that's what I'm up to and uh, maybe we'll film a bit of that for the next video. Thanks for watching guys. Take care. Bye.